Good morning, welcome to Rebels Day 6. We are here with Frank Aquila, a partner at the law firm of Sullivan and Cromwell and one of Wall Street's power brokers in the world of M&A. Um, Mr. Aquila, thank you for joining us today. Frank. Thank you, Rachel, good morning. And um, something that we're here to talk to you about today is your use of social media, technology, and staying com in contact with your clients and your audiences through types of uh, communication, whether it's TV, appearing on Fox News, um, MSNBC, you have a column with Business Week, you're connected on Twitter as well as LinkedIn. Why do you use all of these different types of forms of technology in your practice? Well, I think to a large extent, Rachel, uh, I've always been someone who keeps in touch with people and communicates with people. And uh, e each of the means that I've uh, used over the years really has developed in a different way. Uh, certainly uh, uh, the column uh, and some of the other writings I, I do has been something which uh, uh, really fulfills uh, an interest of mine which is writing. And I've always been a, a good writer. That's probably what got me through college and law school was my ability to uh, write on write and write pretty well on subjects that I know. In terms of LinkedIn, that was something that a client of mine turned me on to a number of years ago and said, hey, this is a way you can keep in touch with people. And it's really great because you put somebody in your network, they move to a different position, you automatically, when they update their contact details, you know where they are. In terms of speaking on TV, that was something that was kind of, if you will, a lucky break. Uh, I had helped out a young reporter many years ago. He wound up going on Bloomberg TV and then to CNBC, and uh, he repaid my uh, early assistance in helping him out, explaining things about M&A by putting me on TV. Uh, in terms of uh, Twitter, I mean, that's a new technology, obviously. None of us really knows where it's going. Uh, but you know, a lot of people are on there, a lot of uh, fairly significant people are on Twitter, and uh, I think it's progressed very rapidly from, you know, oh, hi, I'm at this restaurant or whatever, to something that's become, at least in the business world, a little bit more serious. So we'll see how that goes over time. Um, in conducting interviews with your colleagues, for writing this profile, one of them had noted that Wall Street lawyers sometimes can be perceived as this secret society, and he thinks of you as the one who's kind of pulling the veil back to give readers who aren't um, as familiar an inside glimpse on the workings of, of your firm and what you do. Why do you think more lawyers aren't doing the same type? Uh, your colleagues in, you know, in the M&A world aren't doing the same types of interactions um, with clients and also with just um, others who are interested in the legal profession with what you're doing. Right. Well, uh, you know, I'm going to pull the veil back, but you know, n I'm not going to let you know the secret uh, handshake or anything like that. But uh, you know, quite honestly, I do think that a lot of uh, M&A lawyers and, and M&A deal makers generally are out there and talking at conferences, talking at uh, on different things. Uh, they may not do it at the same rate that I do. Uh, having said that, I do think it's important for uh, business leaders and lawyers who are not focused on M&A to understand the dynamics of the M&A world because, let's face it, it's really reshaping not only American business but the global economy. Every uh, day uh, you're hearing about different deals and they have a dramatic effect. And I think it's important that people understand it, you know, exactly how deals are done. And I think the veil of secrecy comes from the fact that you have to have client confidentiality. And that's one thing, by the way, that I want to stress is whether it's social media, whether it's mass media, whatever I do, and I think any of my responsible colleagues do with respect to discussing our deals or discussing M&A generally, we don't reveal client confidences. We don't talk about our own deals. There's a difference between discussing M&A trends and discussing uh, a particular transaction. And that's something which we as lawyers, whether rebels or traditionalists or however you want to categorize the uh, profession, 
whatever it is, I think it's important that we remember, first and foremost, we're lawyers. We have to represent our clients. We have to keep client confidences. And you know, that's something which we should never forget. What type of response do you get from clients or colleagues when they find out you have a Twitter feed or what types of discussions are engaged by that? The response is generally good uh, with respect to uh, the columns. Sometimes uh, I get uh, you know, people who are vehemently uh, uh, opposed, uh, not vehemently opposed, but they, they strongly disagree with some of the things I say. But uh, for the most part, I think the response has been uh, positive. Uh, in terms of uh, TV, uh, I think a lot of people uh, see me on TV. They know I'm talking about M&A. Uh, they, they probably don't focus as much on the, uh, the details unless they're in the M&A world themselves. But overall, though, the response uh, and, the for and the attention has been, uh, been positive. Great. Thank you so much for being with us today, and we appreciate you taking the time out of your day to answer our questions. My pleasure. Good to meet you.